everyone. I want to tell you a story today. So I was in my early 20s when I got an opportunity to teach at a college. That was Bharti Vidya Bhavan. And uh, so I one day get a call from one of my professors when I was doing my hotel management. So he was also teaching at Bharti Vidya Bhavan. So he called me. He said, Sonia, there is a professor of one of the classes, one of the subjects who's just left midterm. And we're looking for a professor. Since you're good at that subject, why don't you come and take the classes? So I was like super excited. I said, yes, sir, I'll come and I'll, I'll, I'll take the classes. Now, I I never faced the audience. I had never uh, given a lecture to anyone where there were more than three, four people also. So I was nervous, but then I said, okay, fine. It's, a, it's something new. Let me try it. So I dress up properly. I wear a sari and that was my first day. So I reached the college and um, so I'm being told, okay, fine. That's the class. Please go ahead. That's your subject. So the principal walks with me and introduces me to the class and I see there are more than 40 students sitting in that class, right? Most of them were, no, few of them were of my age or maybe a little younger than me. And, but majority of the students were elder than me. Like they were really, really elder. I was in my early 20s and there were students in their mid 30s and late 30s as well, right? So I was super nervous. Because I'd never addressed a gathering, I didn't know how to do public speaking at that time. But somehow then, you know, I said, I introduced myself and um, I asked everybody to introduce themselves. I just wanted that lecture to just pass by because that was my first day and I was super nervous inside. But somehow I wanted to also check, you know, how much do they know about the subject? Because since it was a midterm, I just wanted to be sure that I have a better control over the subject than my students, right? And once I knew that, okay, fine, you know, I'll sail it through because I have good control over the subject. I know my subject very well. And that gave me the confidence to sail it through. And I think uh, my students were very good. Uh, I enjoyed teaching them. And uh, I think even they enjoyed uh, uh, my company and how I was teaching them because I wanted to be of value, right? I wanted them to learn. I wanted to educate them on few things of the subject. And I think I fairly did a good job, guys. So today let's talk about public speaking. How can we be a good public speaker? And uh, what are the things that we can do to enhance our public speaking skills, right? So hello everyone, welcome to my Thinking Out Loud Thursdays, you with Sonia over a cup of coffee. Let's get started. So, uh, you know, public speaking for me is a very essential skill that goes beyond uh, the standing of, beyond just the standing on the stage and addressing a crowd. Right. It's an adventure for me that awaits us all at some point in our careers. Right. Whether it's a team meeting, whether it's a client pitch that we have to do or it's a company wide presentation that we have to do. So the ability to communicate with confidence, with complete clarity and a bit of charm, you know, is an invaluable asset. Most of the jobs today, if you see, they require public speaking skills because you have to then communicate and engage with not just your internal team members, but also with external agencies, external partners, investors uh, and other audiences that you uh, meet on day to day basis. You know, it's a soft skill that um, showcases how well you speak and engage with your listeners. It helps you to sway opinions and also motivate people. So let's get, let's get to know what are the skills that you need to be a good public speaker, right? Number one, communication. You need to be a good communicator to be a good public speaker. It's as simple as that. So you need to be very clear with what you have to talk and how you have to talk. So your diction has to be proper, your grammar has to be good. Uh, and how are you communicating in terms, what is the control over your voice? Are you talking very fast? Are you talking very slow? So if you talk too fast, maybe people will not, you know, keep up with the speed, the way you're talking, or they'll not be able to grasp 
everything that you're talking and if you're talking too slow maybe the audience will get bored about it and you know they lose the interest in the subject even if it's a very relevant and a pretty interesting subject so you should know the art of communication maybe i'll do a session about this uh, maybe in the coming episodes but yes you should be a good communicator you should be very clear with what you want to talk about right Number two, you should know how to articulate your thoughts as well. You should have clear articulation, meaning clarity, right grammar, right pronunciation, uh, use the appropriate words and don't mix up and juggle words because that comes if you are not very clear in your mind, then you know, you're very confused. You don't know what you want to talk. You don't know what you want to communicate to others, right? So choice of words is very important when you're talking to a larger audience or even if it's a very small team meeting as well so you need to choose your words very very wisely right um, the next is what is going to be your style of uh, speaking so if you notice the top post public speakers just observe how they talk so people at times they add a bit of humor People, sometimes they start with a joke, they bring in jokes even in the middle of their um, entire public speaking assignment that they have or the talking that they're doing. They at times bring in comparisons, they bring in statistics, they bring in uh, some uh, quotes, some famous quotes that they start using. So what is it going to be your style? Do you like to add uh, maybe you can start with a personal story of yours like i started today right so most of the public speakers they bring in their personal touch to the entire uh, communication but if it's your internal team meeting you cannot bring in your personal touch by saying your own story but yes you can bring in your personal touch by saying what are the things you did in that uh, campaign that resulted in x amount of results so you can set the context by giving a little bit of story because people love listening to stories right so develop your own style and that will come slowly which is perfectly all right you will not develop your style in one go you will try different kind of things maybe you will crack a joke you will uh, humor the audience a bit and but if it's a very serious monthly review or a quarterly review going on you can't be cracking jokes but yes you can bring in comparisons uh, wherever needed you can talk about the market surveys uh, wherever needed and or if nothing you want to do just stick to the subject stick to whatever is the subject that is being spoken about even that will be perfectly fine right so figure out what your uh, style is figure out what your tone is your pitch your facial expressions how you're talking your body language your hand movements so if you see when i'm talking to all of you right my my facial expressions are are quite different in between i smile my eyes are full with they're filled with excitement my hands they move but they're not like all over the place but my hands go with what i'm talking right uh, and i'm like not like uh, sitting back on the chair i'm like upright because i want to give you full attention so that's my style so figure out what your style is and i think you will be a good public speaker eventually right the next is what is your passion if public speaking the topic that you're talking about and if you're passionate about that topic then i think you're sorted because you know your subject thoroughly you love that topic so if you think that you know marketing is your game so i'm a marketer so for me whenever i'm making marketing presentations or i'm talking about the brand journey i'm talking about how marketing has evolved as a domain publicly I love that because uh, that's my domain and I love talking about it. So that that reflects when I'm talking to people as well, right? So if you're passionate about something, then I think you'll be sorted. And initially, if you're starting your journey of public speaking and you're participating in uh, team review meetings where you have to address the audience, 
then uh, select a topic that you are fully confident and you love that because when you start with something that you're passionate about and that sails it through then you can take on something which is more challenging and for which you'll have to do a bit of research study prepare yourself right but um, make public speaking as your passion because if that's the way you want to rise in your career you want to climb up the ladder then might as well be passionate about it right the next is your confidence like i did a session on self confidence uh, recently you can go through that video as well but you need to be confident not like over confident but be confident and you will be confident only when you know what you're talking how you're talking uh, who your audience is also because it really makes a difference when you know who your audience is so if i'm making a presentation and i'm doing like my quarterly review where my managing director is there my investors are going to be there my senior colleagues from other departments are going to be present then i make sure that i am well prepared because i know who my audience is right what could be their anticipated questions i try to include that in my presentation deck and then i welcome questions what keep coming because i would have also run past that presentation ideas with them and i would have seeked for their questions so what is it that you would want me to still address in that review meeting and even if i i don't get a chance to do that conversation with them i i prepare myself for those anticipated questions and it's it's all right even if i'm not able to answer everybody's questions it's all right i just make it a point to say that okay fine give me some time to prepare for this and i will come back to you say in a week's time or in by the end of the day or by tomorrow evening and i stick to the timeline that i share with them right so uh, confidence comes from when you know who your audience is because when you know who your audience is you are less nervous you are more prepared you have good authority on what you're going to be talking about and it it just makes it a little bit easier right because that's how you will then connect also with your audience right so after you've gone through all your skills what you need to be a good public speaker now if you already have some skills you have been doing these review meetings and tomorrow suddenly you have to stand in front of a larger audience so i'll give you another example of this so in my recent company my last company where i was so we did a channel partner meet where we were giving awards we were sharing information about us uh, projects upcoming projects and the new projects etc and we were announcing the incentive scheme for the channel partners and i had to uh, address the audience and there were about 350 plus channel partners who were present at that gathering now i was nervous because i had never uh, been in front of an audience which was in that large numbers right so i was very nervous so what i did was i started rehearsing i wrote down my script line by line not assuming that okay i'll talk this i'll talk that right from good evening ladies and gentlemen till my last thank you word i wrote down my entire script i rehearsed about it i anticipated all the questions that people in the gathering might ask me i prepared it and then i was like okay fine you know i will be able to sail it through so it was it was a very different uh, exciting uh, uh, event that i did but yes uh, addressing a bigger gathering is a total different ball game altogether right you need to be prepared for it so how do we how do we prepare ourselves uh for a larger public speaking platforms um one is practice prepare and practice like what i did i prepared my whole script and i practiced rehearsed rehearsed i made sure that there were people few my known people i made them sit in front of me i practiced in front of them i practiced in front of the mirror and uh, before the event i reached the venue very early like about 3 hours before i was at the venue and uh, i actually got on the stage with the mic i did like uh, dry runs at least 3 4 times 
uh, there were other people from the event agency who were setting up the venue i asked for their feedback is my voice audible am i breathing properly is my pronunciation correct so whatever they could listen they were like yes ma'am you're doing well so that gives you the confidence because you have rehearsed it you have practiced it and that makes a lot of difference right so please practice and prepare yourself structure your content and uh, i think you will be perfectly okay right the next one i think we've already spoken about is non verbal communication that is very very critical because sometimes the most exciting of the topics they look very boring if the person who's talking about it is like uh, expressionless uh, is not moving is not engaging with eye contact with the audience he's going at the same pitch throughout so uh, you know if i had to talk to you with no excitement nothing with a dull face i'm sure you would not watch my youtube channel at all right so i think it's very critical of our non verbal communication which is <clears throat> what is my facial expression am i looking excited to talk to you to address you to be here with you is my eye having a little sparkle am i maintaining eye contact with all of you am i smiling am i uh, am i in my hand movement is proper it's not all over the place is my body language am i like standing in the right posture etc that makes a lot of difference when you're engaging with any kind of audience at that matter right so please practice that and also breathe properly sometimes we're talking so fast that people don't understand and we are breathless in between so make sure that before you start even a small meeting if even if you are addressing five people or 50 people have a bottle of water next to you have maybe something like a mouth freshener with you so that you know you don't get thirsty your mouth is not dry and you're breathing normally just always tell yourself like that movie you know all is well all is well three idiots <laughs> i do that all the time i keep telling myself all is well sonia all will be well and i think it just it that's just a way of giving yourself a pep talk before you get into the limelight of addressing the audience right the next one is you um you engage in certain clubs like there are toastmasters or there are different public speaking uh, clubs which are there you can become part of that and that will also help you a lot um, although i've never tried that people told me uh, i'm planning to do that uh, let's see how it goes but yes well, early on in your career i remember at our time long back we never had these toastmasters and those public speaking clubs but today you have them make use of it and try uh, and do leave a comment if you've already been part of it to tell me how how is the experience because i'm i'm wanting to try that out right the next is uh, please handle your nervousness and your nervousness will get handled if you're well prepared you've rehearsed properly you're passionate about what you're talking and all the things that i've just spoken about right and one more main critical item is please seek for constructive feedback you know get some uh, good people in the room who you know and so there are good critics and there are bad critics don't seek feedback from people who will criticize you uh, who will not say anything that is worthy enough and who will going to put your morale down so get people who are genuinely they are going to give you good feedback that you can learn and improve yourself right so please seek for constructive feedback and lastly i want to say is record yourself i i used to do that like even when i'm doing these youtube videos with you all of you i do a dry run of it i record myself and i see okay how is my facial expression am i going all over the place am i smiling in between is my energy level in check etc uh, so i do all of that although my content when i'm talking is mostly impromptu but i still want to make sure that i'm making sense and i'm being relevant to all of you right so please make sure that you record and you see yourself how you talking because we can be our best critics and best appreciators we can appreciate us ourselves and we can criticize ourselves because then we are not being biased for our own self so please do that record and see how you performing and you'll see that you know you'll be able to uh, make some recommendations or do some checks on your own self right it's a journey 
we have to understand that this is a journey of continuous improvement just embrace the power of your own voice and let it resonate with the world around you you'll be sorted just remember it's an adventurous roller coaster ride which has excitement which has thrill which has lot of butterflies and those butterflies are okay because they're just waiting to fly away and they will one day fly away right so embrace it with a positive mind and connect with your audiences inspire them uh, and leave a lasting impact on them right on that note i'm going to end my thinking out loud thursdays i hope you found this content valuable and do leave a comment as to how you found this video and if there's anything else on uh, public speaking that you would like to share with me but do subscribe to my channel if you've still not done so right have a fabulous thursday everyone and i'll see you next thursday bye bye